as Graham said, please um, put any questions you've got in the uh, during the call into the iron windows. I'm going to try and pause um, a couple of times during the session just to give uh, everybody a chance to ask the questions they've got. Um, the guys at EduGeek also pulled together some questions that you posed um, before the call, um, so I'm going to cover those off um, as well. So thanks very much if you submitted a question um, previously. In terms of what we're going to go through um, this morning, this is the big topic uh, of the day. I'm going to be covering the upcoming changes to our licensing programs for all UK schools customers. So this is changes that Microsoft's agreed recently with UK government. Um, but we're also going to take a look at the opportunities that all education customers um, could take advantage of in the cloud. Um, like Graham said, we've muted the audience to try and make sure we get through all the content. Um, please put questions as we go through. And I'll answer as many as we can um, on the call. We are going to share the slides um, afterwards as well, um, so you'll have access to all this information uh, after the call as well. Okay, let's kick off. Tim, thanks for your question already. We will come back to that um, shortly. So let's let's start with the, the program uh, licensing changes for the UK. So you might be aware um, that Microsoft and the Department for Education have had a memorandum of understanding or an MOU in place uh, which covers UK schools for about 12 years now. So the MOU is um, simply a set of UK specific pricing and licensing concessions that can be leveraged by schools in the UK. Under the MOU, um, the UK has enjoyed preferential pricing compared to the rest of Europe. That's been in place for the past three years, when the rest of our business actually aligned uh, our pricing um, to the rest of the EU. However, we must now start to correct this imbalance across the region. And I know the first question that comes into your mind is what would Brexit have uh, in terms of an impact on this? Whether or not we stay in Europe, this process will, will continue. To be clear, and I know this is one of the key questions that, that has come out, we have no plan to change the licensing program which are available to education customers. We are not removing the education discounts which academic customers worldwide enjoy, um, and nothing is changing around the pricing for our cloud services. So we are committed to providing Office 365 education for free, and we're not changing any of the licensing programs that are in place today. The MOU is not a licensing program, it's just an overarching set of terms that kind of apply specifically to UK uh, customers. So what we've, what we've done is we work with the UK government, so the Department for Education and Crown Commercial Services over the past, it's probably 12 months, um, to implement a new version of the, the MOU that was in place. Now this new version of the MOU was designed to complement UK government's cloud first policy. And the idea of the new MOU is to provide schools with a transition period to make a move to public cloud services and take advantage of the benefits of the cloud before that pricing alignment takes place. So what we did is we took the decision to change the name of this agreement from an MOU to the Education Cloud Transition Agreement. Like I said, this isn't a new licensing program, it's just a change of name for the MOU and a change of name for the terms and conditions that UK schools are taking advantage of today. So we changed it to make it clear that it is a transition period to move to cloud. We'll cover the cloud uh, options uh, off shortly. So I, I really want to state this really clearly. We're not removing academic discounts for education customers. We're not discontinuing the OVSES licensing agreement or changing the program uh, in any way. And we are committed to providing services like Office 365 Education um, free of charge. In fact, Microsoft's investing more heavily in Office 365 as a platform for teaching and learning with innovations that are coming around the corner like Microsoft Classroom, which will be coming to the UK very soon and I'll cover off later on in terms of what that's going to look like um, moving forward. So ultimately, cloud transformation is really important for UK education because it supports education customers not only ac accessing significant cost savings when they adopt and transform service delivery to staff and students via um, cloud services, but also helps in terms of um, your role in supporting uh, the delivery of that service. So 
under this new arrangement, the Education Cloud Transition uh, uh, Agreement, and with the help and support of our Microsoft partners out there, we can help transition you up to cloud service and leverage cloud platforms like Office 365 Education, which will provide you with kind of a, a simple uh, commercial agreement that you can uh, rely on. So what this does is it not only provides cost savings, but also challenges the, the status quo of a traditional on-premises focused delivery of ICT. So if you look at the current deployment uh, of, of IT within you know thousands of schools around the country, the traditional on-premise model of a Windows client or a client uh, with a Windows upgrade uh, with the core Cal suite and Office sat on it, those three purple boxes are your desktop. On top of that cost, you have your server cost. So that's not just the cost of the server licensing, which is a very small amount of the server cost. You've also got the hardware itself. You've got the management of that server, the deployment costs and storage costs, and also those other hidden costs like powering the server, cooling the server, and also any other support services that you currently uh, pay for from uh, other small to medium um, enterprises out there. So that's traditional um, on-premises uh, infrastructure. But then if we look at moving on to uh, a cloud delivered um, solution, then you can see that that server cost is removed from that budget spreadsheet. So you're delivering um, services using Office 365 Education for your productivity suite, which is free of charge to education customers, Windows 10 for delivering that great experience to students and staff, and looking at services like Enterprise Mobility Suite to kind of cover off the management of the app, of the user, of the data, of the device as well. So you're removing that big chunk of server licensing. And the Microsoft solution to that around a public cloud service to kind of remove those um, services um, is Office 365. So for education, this is a free service for every UK school uh, out there who can sign up today um, and provides uh, massive productivity gains in terms of the size of mailbox that's provided to every user for free with unlimited archiving, with massive personal storage, which is one terabyte, moving to five terabytes very soon, and will be unlimited in the future for all your users' personal storage, um, for delivering a full office client down to your staff and students on any device they wish. And of course, because it's delivered in the cloud, it's accessible uh, on all devices, anytime, anywhere for all staff and students. So we we worked on, on kind of the, the savings that are available by moving to Office 365. And we've calculated about 60% saving just on the Microsoft licensing piece. That doesn't take into account any of the, the TCO costs around that red box on the left hand side that you're removing because you no longer need to manage that server infrastructure when you're looking at simply an Office 365 uh, infrastructure. If you take that in the next step forward and look at using as your Active Directory, you could potentially remove more server hardware by uh, leveraging the Microsoft Cloud to provide those services out to your users. OK, so I am skipping over this slightly, but this is the concept. This is the Education Cloud from a Microsoft perspective on how you can save money moving forward by removing some of those, those costs. OK, so with that in mind, um, it's probably a good idea to take you through the detail of the changes that are coming up um, for the licensing programs which affect um, schools in the UK. So let's take a look at our most popular licensing uh, program uh, that's out there in the UK, which is the OVS-ES agreement, and for larger institutions, the EES uh, agreement. So we have... Um, the majority of customers, uh, UK schools customers, are uh, currently licensed through an OVS-ES agreement. Uh, and the plan um, here is that anybody who is in existing OVS-ES agreement, so you have an agreement in place today, we will allow you to continue renewing that agreement at the same UK prices as, as you're paying today up until your next renewal point after the 1st of July 2018. So that what that means is you carry on renewing your agreement for either a one year or a three year term until the next renewal point after July 2018. So let's take for example you have an OVS ES agreement 
uh, which is up for renewal in May this year. So the 1st of May uh, next month. You could renew for a one year period uh, and get today's UK pricing. You could then renew for a further year, which would take you out up until 2017, 2018, and then renew for three years, which will take you out to 2021 before you see any price impact that comes in after July 2018. So you should work with your partner, your Microsoft retailer, to make sure that your licensing period fits into these arrows in that you push out your renewal point as late as possible to take advantage of uh, current UK prices. Okie dokie. So that's current UK customers. We've protected you up until at least the 1st of July 2018 from any pricing impacts as a result of this um, project. Um, hopefully that kind of explains it pretty well. Um, I'm going to quickly pause there because I did notice one question specific to this and two questions. So Matt Dovey, is the OVSCS discount slowly disappearing or prices held until July 2018? So the OVSES discount for existing customers who are currently in an agreement won't uh, be removed until after the 1st of July 2018, your next renewal point after that. David, what happens if you have a three-year agreement that expires after July 2018? So at that expiry point, after July 2018, when you come to renew, it will be at the new price point. And you've got until then to start making this migration up into cloud. And Tim, quite right, you need to get as close to July the 1st, 2018, then renew for three years. Um, Paul, I read that they are slowly removing it, so this is saying the opposite. Uh, that's right. David Broadley, what is the price differences after this date? So, really good question. Um, Microsoft doesn't set final pricing to you. That's done through our partners. That being said, we would expect that the price difference on uh, let's say the desktop, that's the most popular license we have. We would say it's probably going to be around 19, 19.19% difference. Now, a really key point to make here is that price impact is only for on-premises licenses. It does not affect any cloud services like Office 365 Education, uh, Intune, EMS, Azure. Um, that's the, uh, it's only on on-premises uh, licensing. Uh, Kevin, our renewal is due 31st of July 2018. Can we renew a month early to get the additional three years? Unfortunately not. Um, accounting rules won't let us uh, renew early because we'll basically be charging you twice, unfortunately. Uh, hopefully, David, I've answered your question. John, we can't bring forward a renewal date, unfortunately. Um, Tim, yes, you'd renew for three years at July, which will take you out to 2020. Um, Matthew Stevenson, we have no plans to upgrade to Office 365 or Cloud. We want to keep everything in-house. Will this still be available? Absolutely. On-premises licensing isn't going away. There'll just be a pricing impact after July 2018. Tim Hobson, would that be 19% increased year on year? Um, no, it's just going to be at that price increase um, compared to today. It's a one-off. David, but schools can't just go fully to the cloud. Um, well, we kind of we dispute that in terms of um, the solutions that are available to schools, in terms of providing productivity um, out of the cloud, using things like Office 365 Education using solutions like Azure, um, but I'm going to kind of come back to that um, shortly in, in another slide, so I'll come back to you on that. Paul, there are, um, I've noted a, a load of questions before that, that probably relate into that in terms of some questions and some okay. technical questions around cloud stuff, so we can we can take those either at that point or at the end as well. Okay, we'll come back to that because I know there's, there's a couple of questions on that that came in uh, okay. earlier on uh, as well. Okay, so um, it seems like this is kind of the, where the questions are coming, so I might just stick on this to try and answer as many questions as I can. Yeah, um, that's fine. So let me just go back up again. Uh, Matt Dovey, can we push back renewal dates? Renew for 18 months? Uh, no, so the, the 
minimum is 12 months and you can say so you can only choose between a 12 month renewal or a three year renewal we can't do anything uh, outside of those uh, parameters um, does this not penalize schools in rural areas with unreliable or expensive internet connectivity really good point and it's something that we are working with with government on um, to kind of identify what support can be provided um, to those schools out there uh, with insufficient kind of broadband. What we would say is that the Office 365 draw isn't huge in terms of its requirements uh, when you look at uh, network connectivity requirements. Um, but it's a really good point and something we are working with, with government and it's kind of our challenge to government as well to say um, what can be done to help schools who are at a disadvantage not just around you know providing um, things like uh, Office 365 but, but everything by providing um, students with access to good internet is a key thing um, for all learners uh, in the UK so that's something we're working with government on nothing to share there today but there are a few projects happening right now so Ian to start a new agreement in June I should do two times one year and then a one times three year agreement. Uh, yes, that would make sense. So you can, yeah, as long as you're on this train, um, as long as you can make it work in terms of either a one year or a three year, it's up to you how you kind of do that with your partner. If your renewal is due 10th of July 2018, I assume you could forfeit a month and take a new agreement at the end of July 2018. Uh, so you couldn't have a licensing gap, if I understand your questions, because you'd have a gap where you weren't covered for Microsoft licensing. Um, so we can't, you couldn't forfeit a month without deinstalling all the software you have um, on your on your systems today. Uh, to migrate our school to a cloud. Oh. Wow, our questions. To migrate our school to a cloud solution was cost us 80% more, even taken as TCO. So it'd be good to kind of understand that with you uh, and kind of work through those numbers uh, and see uh, what we can do around that when we take into account Office 365, when we take into account uh, Azure, and moving off legacy systems where you're, you know, kind of what you're paying for at the moment. Luke, with moving to the cloud, we can't guarantee our internet connectivity. Uh, interesting point. Um, I would say um, that the investment that's been made in, into you know inter internet infrastructure today means it's you know a hell of a lot more reliable, and the uptime that we promise through our services is is huge. Uh, and I kind of compare it to uptime of a network in general. So an on-premises network is not guaranteed for 100% of the time either but it's a good point um, Darren I think I've gone over the the broadband piece um, I guess a cost-effective way forward is to buy perpetual licenses file print AD services locally and then rely upon office 365 for exchange and SharePoint that's one way to go um, there's also other clever things we can do around licensing. Again, I'll, I'll loop back around to that shortly um, because we have new benefits which will allow you to utilize on-premises servers but in the cloud and take advantage of those cost savings that the cloud can provide. Um, will Azure AD full version have an education discount? Yes, it does. So Azure AD Premium. Uh, it's available with an academic discount through your uh, licensing agreement. Your reseller will be able to give you a price. Azure AD Basic is available for free to education as well, if that will do the job. But yeah, there are discounts on AD Premium. Um, da, da, da. Okie dokie. I think let's move on from there, Graham. Um, and okay. what we might do is pick them up because I don't think we're going to get through the content. Um, okay, so that's for customers who are existing customers who have an agreement today. The other chunk of customers who don't have an OVS ES uh, agreement in place today will see that price impact from the 1st of July this year. So this is probably what I was referred to earlier on about us removing these discounts in chunks over the next couple of years. That's only for customers who don't have an OVS ES agreement today. So if you didn't have an agreement 
uh, in place today uh, and you were to sign a new agreement after the 1st of July 2016 you would see a price impact compared to if you were to start that agreement today there will also be uh, an incremental price impact if you were to sign up until July 2017 compared to um, today or even compared to after July 2016 and then on the 1st of July 2018 again we will be aligned um, to the rest of Europe for if you are a new OVSES customer or if you're renewing uh, agreement after that point. So this is probably where that confusion comes in terms of we are going to be having a, a price impact year on year over the next couple of years. That's only for net new schools, uh, OVSES customers. Okay. And over this period of time, the message here is wherever possible move up to cloud and take advantage of the cost savings uh, that you can make so that's OVSES and um, there are some schools out there that are still buying perpetual licenses so through the academic select plus program there is going to be a pricing impact for all academic select plus prices from 1st of July this year where we are uh, aligning to the rest of Europe uh, for UK schools from the 1st of July this year we are going to maintain the current UK specific 20% discount that UK schools benefit from uh, on the price list up until July 2017 at which point that uh, price uh, discount will be removed as well. So what this means is any orders after the 1st of July 2016, any select plus orders that is for licenses and or software assurance will be at a higher price than if you were to place the order before July this year. I don't know what the next question is going to be. That pricing impact is around and about 19, that's 1.9 percent. We um, work really closely with government around this licensing program. We don't see many schools purchasing this way. Um, it's a very tactical way of li uh, buying licensing and actually the cost model doesn't work out uh, when you look at the price variance between buying a license through Academic Select Plus compared to buying it through a subscription license agreement like OVS ES. So we would encourage anybody who's buying Academic Select Plus to look at buying through an OVS ES agreement and put yourself into that kind of uh, renewing customer model where you're going to have your prices protected for you know three to five years rather than making an investment into Academic Select Plus. However, if that's the way to go, this is what the pricing will look like over the, the next couple of years. Um, and the last program which is uh, kind of impacted by these changes is the school agreement. So the Microsoft school agreement is not used uh, very much at all in the UK because it counts devices rather than FTEs or users. Um, so for this reason uh, and because it doesn't fit UK requirements, you'll be seeing that the discount levels applied to the school agreement uh, will be tiered uh, and removed um, over the next couple of years. So from the 1st of July uh, this year again, uh, if you are renewing a school agreement or if you wanted to take out a brand new school agreement after that date it would be at a higher price than if you were to take it out or renew before July this year and then we're having another <coughs> pricing point uh, from the 1st of July 2017 as well like I say the school agreement is not the best way to buy Microsoft licenses um, we would encourage uh, a move uh, or a consideration of OVSES rather than the school agreement and if you are a school agreement customer, we will allow you to um, start a new OVS ES agreement as if you were a renewing customer. So basically, if you are a school agreement customer who's coming to the end of the term, we can treat you as if you were on the top arrow on this slide, so renewing. So you have until you know the 1st of July 2018 to start uh, a new OVS ES agreement and we'll lock in today's UK prices. But the number of school agreement customers out there uh, are very few and far between. Um, we actually mostly see it uh, in local authorities buying their service through these sorts of agreements. Um, so actually for schools, OVS, yes, and cloud is kind of the way to go. Uh, another important point here is that any of, the, any of you who are buying licenses through our academic open program, 
pricing for academic open is not affected and will continue uh, as is there'll be no price changes to academic open as a result of uh, this uh, alignment and as I said earlier on the pricing for cloud is not changing we are committed to providing Office 365 education for free and to provide um, those academic discounts on products like Azure AD on EMS uh, and Intune as well um, another key point is some of the UK concessions that schools are specifically in the UK can take advantage of under the terms of this education cloud transition agreement now all of these concessions are designed to give schools comfort that a subscription licensing agreement is the way to go rather than looking at select plus okay so the first concession that any school out there can take advantage of is how you define yourself as an institution when you start a Microsoft licensing agreement what this means is if you have users so FTEs in your organization who do not use Microsoft software you do not have to count them in your FTE count so you can carve out a group of users who never use Microsoft stuff and just license the rest who do under your FTE count there's nothing special you have to do there it's just that would be the FTE count that you declare on your agreement that is a UK specific concession the second one is if you want to take out a three-year licensing term so an OVSES agreement normally our program rule says when you define your user count at the start of the agreement so the number of FTEs you cannot decrease that number below the first year over the term of the three-year agreement what that means is if you declared a hundred FTEs at day one of your three-year term and for whatever reason so you lost some staff uh, over the course of the first year normally you would not be allowed to reduce that number of staff when you come to you know your anniversary order in the second year and the UK licensing terms will let you do that you can reduce the number of FTEs on your uh, agreement uh, in year two or year three of a three-year agreement as long as it meets the true reflection of your institution so that allows you to bring it down the only caveat there is it can't go below the minimums which is five FTEs for an OVSES but you can bring down the number of users on your three-year term if you wish and then the third one is if and this this actually never really happens uh, especially in the UK but if you decide that a subscription licensing agreement so the OVSES agreement isn't the right thing for you um, there is a concept called the buyout so the buyout means that at the end of your term of your agreement you can actually convert your subscription licenses into a perpetual license so you can just walk away but with the use rights for the products that you buy out in the UK will allow um, a 10% discount on the standard price of, of a buyout license if a school decides it's not right for them at the end of the term and they want to go perpetual and the last main concession we have in place I've kind of already mentioned if you're in a school agreement today you're allowed to sign up into a brand new OVSDS agreement as if you are a renewing customers and take advantage of the UK discounts that are in place up until July 2018 okay so all of this means that we've got in place for UK schools a transitionary agreement up until July 2018 which gives customers um, the option to one migrate to the cloud immediately and take advantage of these cost savings straight away so moving off um, the old stack of on-premises software and moving into an office 365 education environment for example by moving on to Azure Active Directory by looking at the EMS um, add-on to provide that management of your devices uh, through the cloud and even looking further into using Azure as a platform um, for you moving forward so you, using Microsoft platform uh, as your infrastructure to provide services anytime and, and anywhere and let Microsoft manage that for you the other option is you've got this you know between three and five years of a transition period um, you can extend this migration time by carrying on renewing your current agreement during this transition period and being clever about how you renew um, to ensure you've got extra time to start making this transition up to cloud and making cost savings okay so I'm pretty sure there is going to be a lot of questions in the IM window Graham, are there any burning ones there? That you've um, 
No, I mean, I've, I've noted one or two, but I, I think there's been a bit of uh, community self-help here and um, some oh. people have been answering some questions, which is good. Um, probably the pertinent one I've picked up is um, Rob's there. Can OVSES agreements be merged, schools forming a map, for example? OK, yeah, that's a really good question. Absolutely. So um, we are obviously seeing more and more um, academies springing up. I'm not going to comment on that. Um, and uh, multi-academy trusts, um, have been formed over the last few years and we want to make it as easy as possible for MATS to aggregate their licensing and take advantage of any cost savings they might have by you know uh, buying licenses in volume so absolutely we we encourage MATS and even just groups of schools who are affiliated in some way to come together and start a single agreement now that can seem a little bit daunting especially if you've got schools or academies who already have their own individual licensing agreements um, however we have ways and means of, of kind of making that as easy as possible um, I won't go into it today um, but uh, we absolutely encourage that uh, and we can do it in a way to make sure that nobody is penalized and we make sure there is no double licensing should you have to kind of integrate different schools into one single agreement but the key message there is yes we can help uh, and reach out to us uh, if you want a conversation around how best to do that um, so there's another question um, just reading this here we are on a hosted office 365 with our local authority what licenses do we need to utilize the unlimited office 365 education pro plus for permanent use on site machines or is it cheaper to buy perpetual with only having 40 to 50 computers in the school I'm not sure I fully understand that question actually uh, no. I'm assuming that there's a, that's a question of delivering office on premise from the cloud um yeah Which, we might need who, to... who asked that question Graham? let me see um, if i can read it um... malaney 18 if i've got that pronunciation right wow, i can i can make a note of it and we can pick it up um later if we don't answer it so in terms of so the office 365 education licensing itself i'll just quickly cover that because it, it does seem a little complicated I, i'd agree so if we think of Office 365 um, education itself, and I think I have a slide, so bear with me, guys, whilst I find it. I oh, know I'm not going to forward through. Anyway, we'll come on to it shortly. But Office 365 education is free of charge to any education, education institution in the UK. Office 365 education includes um, exchange online, and all the features that are available in Plan 2, if you look up online what that includes. SharePoint Online, it includes everything in Plan 2. And Skype for Business Online, everything that's available in Plan 2. All of that is free of charge to any education institution in the UK. And you can sign up um, for that uh, directly through the Microsoft portal or have a chat with your, your partner in terms of how you can sign up for that. All of that is free. It doesn't require any licensing contract at all you can just sign up online and get that. The, the other piece to Office 365 is the Office client itself. So this is Office 365 Pro Plus. Office 365 Pro Plus provides you with um, five installs on a PC or a Mac, five installs on a tablet, so an iPad or, or an Android. Uh, and it's delivered from Office 365, but it's installed onto the client itself. So it's not a streamed office, it's installed on the, on, the, on the client and runs from the client. Now Office 365 Pro Plus is a free benefit for any organization who licenses office on-premise for all of their staff. So let's say you've got a, an OVSES agreement for 100 staff and you're licensed for office. That in allows you to install Office on all the devices in your institution. So all those shared devices, uh, you know, all the teachers' devices, all your devices as well, they're all covered uh, at, at the institution level. But because you've got this Office 365 Pro Plus benefit included in the Office license, you can also deliver Office to all your staff and student from Office 365 by giving them access to these installs. What I'll do is I'll provide some details when we send out these slides in terms of how that can be set up so that your staff and students can take advantage of that free office uh, that comes as a benefit of you licensing office for the staff uh, as well. Um, guys, if we can just hold off asking questions for a bit just to give us a chance to get 
through them because otherwise it's a bit difficult to track um, questions that have been asked. If you, so if you just hold on for a second or two. Um, so Matt, you've asked a question, what guarantees do we have that Office 365 um, will stay free? Um, yeah, it, it's a well, really good go on, Paul. Well, for a good example, it's written into the new transition agreement with government. We've committed to make it free. Um, but Graham, I don't know if you wanted to kind of pick that one up. No, I think the only thing I was going to add was that um, it's um, if you look at Office 365 um, as a product, Office 365 is free to education worldwide from Microsoft. So although neither me and Paul can give you any assurances, um, you know, that, that you're probably looking for, because, you know, we can't sort of say, as you've articulated in your question, promise we won't, um, isn't binding enough, then... Um, apart from what Paul's just already out articulated, what we can say is that Office 365 is um, a global program for education that is free. Um, so if you look at um, if you look at the size of the uh, worldwide education business for uh, for Microsoft, actually met charging schools for that based on the rate at which we charge schools for in terms of licensing, in terms of overall um, growth or revenue for the company, commercially, it wouldn't actually really move the needle that much. Um, and we, if you compare that to uh, the PR and the press that we would get in terms of changing our shift on on having it from free to then charging it would massively outweigh that that benefit we would get from a, from a commercial perspective so it really wouldn't make much sense for us to do it but it's very difficult for us to give you an absolute defined yes or no that we put binding for you other than what paul's outlined because you know that would need to come from 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 the leadership team but I don't think for a moment that anybody that you'll talk to in Microsoft, certainly me, Paul, and, and, and our leadership teams would suggest that, you know, Microsoft is, is going to start charging for Office 365 because we've already made that commitment that, that it's going to be free. And that's a worldwide commitment. Uh, yeah. And on top of that, Graham, um, we're making more investments into the, the free part of Office 365, which hopefully we're going to get time to quickly skip over. Um, but I'm going to quickly come back to a couple of the questions that were asked um, before the call. Um, I think we've answered some of them. Um, so I'm going to skip over a couple and apologies to yours and I haven't answered it, but in the interest of time. Um, one of the key questions was, you know, what are the benefits uh, for each of the traditional licensing schemes? I think one of the key things, so when you talk traditional, I'm assuming you're talking subscription versus um, perpetual. Um, so a subscription license agreement is a lot more cost effective. If you simply compare the cost over a number of years, subscription still makes financial sense. But subscription also provides you with significant benefits around things like software assurance, which allows you to upgrade to the latest version as of when we uh, release it. Um, specifically for the OVSES agreement, um, a subscription license agreement allows you to buy office for your staff and all your students get offers as well uh, at no additional cost. The same applies for Windows. If you license the Windows upgrade for all your staff, all your students get a Windows 10 education upgrade at no cost as well. And things like Intune. So license Intune for your staff, <coughs> excuse me. And then all your students uh, are able to have an Intune license at no additional cost as well. So that's where we're investing in terms of this company. It's into description licensing programs. That's where you're gonna see the most benefits over and above cost uh, as well. Um, and then there were quite a few questions around um, when moving to cloud delivered services, how do we migrate our licensing um, to the cloud equivalent uh, without double paying for capabilities? How do we add cl cloud capabilities to traditional licenses? How do we add on-prem capabilities uh, and et cetera, et cetera. And I think one of the, one of the key um, concepts that we have uh, that are available to customers who have licenses with software assurance, which every OVSES customer already has. There are a couple of key um, concepts which are really worth knowing, especially in terms of looking at that transition into cloud. The first one, and apologies, we're getting into licensing. I am a licensing person, but it's, it's pretty important to know. The first one is a concept that we have called, is called license mobility. What this means is if you've got um, server licenses, like things like System Center, like SharePoint Server or SQL Server, your software assurance allows you to move those licenses up and into the cloud. So you can pay for the on-premise price 
and move it into the cloud and take advantage of the discounts that you're getting today and you'll continue to get even after July 2018 rather than paying for that server license to deliver from Azure. So you can lift and you can shift your workload directly into Azure and you're not double paying um, for that license. You have the choice. You can buy, uh, buy on-premise and shift into Azure or you can buy in Azure and serve that uh, license um, directly from Azure. And I must say, it's not just Azure you can do this to. We call it a third-party shared servers. So A and other hoster, you can move your license up into and then kind of save money on that on-premises hardware that you're spending at the moment. So that's one key uh, use right you have today. You don't have to pay any extra for that. It's just a move of the license up into the cloud. But one key product that doesn't have license mobility is the Windows Server license. So you can't, under this term, just lift and shift a Windows Server license up into Azure. However, from February this year, we introduced something called the Hybrid Use Benefit, which allows you to move your Windows Server license up into Azure uh, and only be paying for the on-premise academic price for that uh, Windows Server license. So to explain it a bit further, what we'll allow you to do is if you've got a Windows Server data center license on your OVS Yes agreement, which automatically co uh, covers you uh, for software assurance, you can move that Windows Server workload into Azure and you'll only pay for the compute price. You don't pay for the Windows Server license in Azure. So you're effectively utilizing the academic discounts you have and using it in Azure. The great thing is with the data center, you can carry on running that workload on premises at the same time. So you can take your Windows Server data center workload, keep it on premise and transition uh, up to Azure at, at your own rate. I'm not going to go into the details of you know how many cores and stuff. We'll send out the, uh, the deck afterwards. Um, but Windows Server data center, you can run on premises and in Azure at the same time. And in terms of what that means in terms of cost, it's going to work out around about a 40% saving uh, in Azure just because you're buying licenses um, through your academic licensing agreement. So what we're providing here is the option for you to move your workloads into Azure um, and take advantage of the academic discounts you get on your underlying licensing uh, and uh, kind of use Azure to reduce some of those costs as well. So a really quick conscious of time um, overview of, of uh, the hybrid uh, benefit. I did put my email address into the iWindow window earlier. Please reach out to me uh, if you've got questions and I will try and come back to you as soon as I can or reach out to your partner. But this is something that's available to you today if you have software assurance on your licenses, which under OVSES um, you have uh, in place already. Okay, so a couple of the other questions that came in before the call. Um, I think the first question uh, was around um, using cloud uh, is not a slick or free from fiction, uh, friction uh, desktop app approach with shared folders and network home directories. Uh, until it is, scenarios will be edge cases, for example, one-to-one -one device deployments. Discuss. I think the aim here um, from Microsoft uh, and I'm sure from yourselves, is to provide a, a productive experience for staff and students. And in our opinion, and government's opinion, freeing them from a traditional on-premises environment and allowing them to access their work on the same devices they use for everything else day to day, anytime and anywhere, the cloud is the way to go here. A cloud delivered model kind of removes the constraints of a fixed structure. And things like sharing and collaborating, which are a couple of things you've uh, been mentioning here, are key tenants of a cloud solution. So Office 365 is the perfect platform for staff and students to collaborate on work, to share documents and folders, but in a secure way that is managed um, by the users and still by yourselves, but kept secure and compliant on Microsoft data centers. And then the other questions are around, uh, is licensing after 2018 going to be based on FTE staff like it is now? Yes, it is. What's the price difference? I've kind of gone over that. Is education discount going to completely disappear? No. Um, 
is Office, yes, we've answered that. Will this affect all licensing, such as server client licensing in Office? So all on-premises licensing will be affected from July 2018. Cloud will not. And have Microsoft got any confirmed education pricing from Azure? Yep, Azure is available to education customers, and we do offer discounts uh, on Azure based on, on volume requirements. Again, if you've got an interest in Azure, reach out to me, reach out to your partner, um, and we can definitely help you understand what that will look like for your uh, organization. Graham, any other burning questions? No, other than the ones that, that have been asked previously. There's nothing, um, I think you've covered all the ones that have been picked okay. up. Okay, well I get a transcript of these, of these questions as well, so if there's anything I can pick up on. Um, so, um, about that's a great point i think um so what i really 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 quickly wanted to do was talk about um some of the investments i alluded to earlier on around office 365 and education which will be coming to the uk and kind of demonstrates some of the stuff that's coming down the line uh, which will be really interesting to schools in terms of transforming teaching and learning based on a microsoft delivered platform so this is kind of just t taking you through you know the future of Office 365 uh, and where we're going to be sitting very, very soon and some of the offerings that we'll be providing into education. And the first three that I'm going to provide will all be free and will all be included in the Office 365 education plan available to any school in the UK. So the first one we announced recently is the upcoming availability of Microsoft Classroom. So this builds on the OneNote class notebook, which is available now free of charge. You can go to that URL at the bottom right now to download. And what this will do is provide teachers with an integrated solution for managing classes as well as uh, assignments as well. So students uh, can access and complete assignments from all their devices, anytime, anywhere, and collaborate with their classroom uh, classmates uh, in real time. So this is in preview in the US currently, but will be available in the UK soon. Um, I've put a URL at the top right, uh, which is our roadmap for Office 365. So you can actually see all the innovations that are coming down the track. Um, but Classroom is going to be a, a massive uh, change uh, available to um, all teachers in the UK delivered from Office 365 using OneNote uh, and the kind of class notebook and the learning tools that are included in there to deliver that classroom experience from uh, the cloud. So that's uh, Microsoft Classroom. The second piece is Microsoft Forms. So Forms uh, has also been announced recently and this is going to provide teachers with an easy to use test setting solution because uh, it's hosted in the cloud. Students complete the tests from any web browser, so anytime, anywhere and the teacher gets built-in analytics to analyze the results. This is available in preview now uh, at the URL at the bottom left as well, so available for you to kind of tinker with um, today. And there's another investment we're making into teaching and learning uh, delivered from, from Office 365. And then the third innovation which is coming down the track is School Data Sync. So SDS, um, helps to automate the integration with your MIS system. So teachers in specifically can spend less time setting up their classes and managing the kind of the admin access to all the class materials uh, and the learning tools. Um, so the school is in charge of teacher and student data. It's just syncing once for all of your learning applications. So this allows you to use things like Office 365 groups um, to create classes really, really quickly, but pulling all the stuff from your uh, MIS systems. And the great thing is teachers and students get a single sign-on experience for all of our apps using this system. Again, this is in preview, but have a quick look uh, at the URL I've put at the bottom uh, and provide your feedback uh, as well. Okay, so that's all the free stuff that's coming down the track. Um, all of those features are coming to UK education customers very soon. Um, hopefully, I kind of explained earlier on very, very quickly what's included in uh, Office 365 for free for UK schools today. Um, but um, from the 1st of May, Microsoft will also offering a new set of features with what we call the E5 plan. We don't have time to go through everything today, but with E5, we're building on the existing Office 365 features and we're basically going to be offering a complete solution for education. So this is going to include technologies such as Cloud PBX, 
Um, so that allows you to replace your existing PBX systems with a set of features uh, directly delivered from Office 365, which is integrated in the whole Office 365 um, experience. So with Cloud PBX, your users can take can, uh, can do basic call controls like place, receive calls, transfer calls, all the other stuff you'd expect. We're also adding PSTN conferencing. Um, so meeting attendees can dial into Skype meetings from virtually any device. Basically what we've done today, a couple of quick clicks to um, set up this Skype meeting. I can pull in um, people from outside onto this call as I like, uh, and it's all delivered from the cloud, meaning you can remove all those costs for uh, hardware infrastructure. And the third piece of the jigsaw, which is coming later on this year, is PSTN calling delivered from Office 365. So what that means um, is that it'll allow you to subscribe to calling plans from Office 365. So your entire telecom solution will be hosted from the cloud and integrated with the Office 365 platform. E5 is coming uh, from the 1st of May and PSTN calling will be coming later in the year. There's also a couple of um, analytics pieces that's included in, into E5. The key one here, I would say, is Power BI, which allows your users, your, your staff, um, to look at the data, in, big data in real time and analyze it and provides lovely, fresh dashboards um, for their analysis through a, a cloud-delivered service. And then the last kind of pillar of E5 is around security and compliance. So the, the two main ones here are custom lockbox, which effectively means that nobody within Microsoft will have any access to any of your data, even for support uh, reasons. Any data that's office, in Office 365 is locked down unless we get explicit permission from you as the uh, institution that we can access data. The second one is advanced threat protection, which has lots of really technical um, ways of ensuring uh, security uh, to all cloud uh, documentation so things like secure attachments so making sure that every attachment that is clicked on by your users staff and students is protected any URLs um, any uh, emails is all protected by um, advanced threat protection and all included in the e5 suite I understand I've really really gone over that at a very high level and you will hear a lot more from us around e5 and education over the next few weeks um, and pricing will be available um, from the 1st of May um, I've put up here a kind of estimate price. It's around about five to six pounds uh, per user per month in faculty. However, there are additional discounts on that if you're already licensed for the desktop. So don't take that price as red. It will be lower than that for anybody who's already buying the desktop, but your partner will be able to give you pricing uh, very shortly. And if E5 as a whole suite is not for you and you prefer to just look at individual um, standalone pieces, then things like, yeah, uh, a PBX is available as a standalone. Here's some estimated pricing here per user per month. And you've got to consider um, that um, this is a cost for hosting your PBX in cloud. You can get rid of any on-premise PBX you have. Uh, and yes, you can have some using on E5, some on just cloud PBX. Uh, it's up to you. You can buy as many or as few as you wish. So we literally have two minutes left and I've really rushed over E5 and apologies for that, but it seemed important that we um, kind of cover your questions around the pricing changes. What I wanted to show you with the free stuff that's coming um, with the Microsoft Classroom, with STS, with Forms, with all that sort of stuff, that's the investment that we're committed to providing into education. And the commitment that we have that it will continue to be free is at least locked in till July 2018. However, there are no plans for us to start cha charging for the free components of Office 365 today. And E5, further to the cost savings that you can make just around moving your Exchange, your SharePoint, your Skype for Business um, services to the cloud, E5 is also going to provide you cost-saving opportunities around some of the other workflows you have, like voice, like any security products that you have in place today. And Matthew and Luke, that £4.41 per student per month sounds scary, but actually you're probably not going to want to buy E5 for all of your students because your students will probably not be using Power BI, Delve Analytics. We'll be looking at, you know, which which of those services do you need for your students? And David, do you pay per staff or per pupils? It's both. Um, it's a per user licensing model. 
but we'll be doing lots more webinars uh, and sessions around E5 moving forward. Um, again, I've put my, um, so uh, Millenni 18, OVSES, same uh, pricing. Um, I'm going to put my email address in the box again, so feel free to just email me directly. And I'm sure my email box is already filling up. In the interest of time, we'll close it there. Um, Greg, anything else you wanted to add? No, so just in summary, um, we have taken some some more questions. Um, sorry, we couldn't probably uh, possibly answer them all, but there was quite a lot. So we'll look to um, uh, compile something for, for the questions that, that we haven't answered. Um, what I would say, just on a general point of note, um, in terms of a cloud strategy from Microsoft, um, we talk a lot about hybrid cloud. And certainly if you look at education, some of the challenges around um, connectivity, we're certainly not saying that every school has got to pack up all its servers and stick everything in the cloud because you've all got fantastic internet connectivity. That, that's not the case at all. The solutions that we deploy absolutely support hybrid environments. So if you look at things like having a directory on premise, ha having to print on premise, um, having to build devices, then those are some things that you would probably still do um, from a small on-premise server while utilizing um, other things in the cloud. The other thing you need to consider as well is when you look at Windows 10, we to do talk about deploying Windows 10 in a different way as a terms in, in terms of not necessarily going for a wipe and replace. So if you buy a Windows 10 device, um, there are two new technologies for deploying that device, which means you don't need to re-image those Windows 10 devices. They will build themselves out of the box. If anybody is not aware of that technology, I'd suggest you go and have a look um, on the Windows 10 TechNet pages on how to deploy Windows 10, because that that really does change the game in terms of having to um, do a wipe and replace. Um, there was also some talk about a uh, model for this uh, cloud, which we're working on at the moment. And some folks from EduGeek have kindly volunteered their services to help support the review of that um, that work that we're conducting at the moment. And we hope to be publishing that in uh, probably around mid-May, um, which will be available um, to you guys in EduGeek first. So um, we will be providing that model, which will be a high level design document with um, some diagrams and also a cost model associated with it as well. So um, yeah, that's it from me. And, and I would just like to thank um, Sean and Chris for helping us set this session up and, and thank you for everyone who has attended. Um, really appreciate you taking the time. Um, it's been great feedback um, and we'll uh, do a follow-up to um, answer as many questions as possible. So thank you once again. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.